Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The event of resurrection is something that can be, cannot be easily forgotten or can be sidelined. The resurrection is the power that brings and gives new life to each one of us. The resurrection of Jesus gave new strength, new power to the apostles. That's what we see in the first and the second reading of today. Saint Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, bears witness to the resurrection of Jesus. Each one of us are called to experience the power of the risen Lord. And where can we meet the risen Lord? First of all, in the scriptures, in the breaking of the word, and then in the breaking of the bread. As we have come to celebrate this Mass, let us listen to the Word of God. Let us also participate fully in breaking of the bread. Along with the bread and wine, let us offer ourselves and break ourselves to our brothers and sisters. Let us ask God to forgive us for those moments that we have failed to read the Word of God and meditate upon it for our failure to recognize the presence of the Lord in our lives. And humbly we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and all the earth. 
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the leaven, lifted up his voice and addressed the multitude. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. But God raised him up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will dwell in hope, for thou wilt not abandon me, my soul, to the hates, nor let the Holy One see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou wilt make me full of gladness with thy presence. Brethren, I must say to you confidently, to the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke to the re of the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to the heads, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are witnesses. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O oh Lord, it is you who are my portion and God. It is you yourself who are my prize. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my side. Since He is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in You. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. A reading from the letter of Saint Peter. If you invoke as Father him who judges each one impartially according to his deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed for the futile ways inherited from your fathers not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ, 
like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifested at the end of times for your sake. Through him you will have confidence in God, who raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Lord Jesus, open to us the scriptures. Make our hearts burn within us while you talk to us. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. Sing. Alleluia to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus we are going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, what is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going, he appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread, and blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us 
while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven gathered together, and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in these days of lockdown and seal down, our life as human beings has drastically changed. The thought of catching COVID-19 is frightening us. A kind of disappointment and despair can be seen in the faces of many. There seems to be no end to this sickness. Children, youth and adults all are eagerly waiting to be set free. Perhaps we too might have felt the same. People seem to be losing hope. Darkness has pervaded the entire world. All the pre-planned programs such as priestly ordinations, religious professions, weddings, First Holy Communion, Jubilees and the rest have been postponed. Such was the situation of the apostles and disciples after the death of their leader and master, Jesus Christ. They had joined the company of Jesus with great hopes. They had seen his life, heard his powerful teachings and speeches, seen wonderful miracles, and suddenly the was a great tragedy. The master was arrested, beaten up, persecuted and killed. He was nailed to a cross. His agonizing death on the cross shattered all their dreams. More than that, a kind of fear entered in their mind, their lives. They were not prepared to die. They were, they wanted to escape from the situation. They were in confusion, not knowing what to do and where to go. Some kept hiding themselves. Others went back to their former jobs and some left to their hometown. The Gospel of the day tells us the journey of the two disciples to a village called Emmaus. The name Emmaus occurs only once in the Bible, but in one of the most amazing of contexts. Not much is told in the Bible about this route of travel. We know it was about seven miles from Jerusalem. In a spiritual sense, the word Emmaus means an earnest longing. Here we find two men walking in the evening from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And one of them is named Cleophas. By reading their conversation, we can sense the downcast spirit in these two disciples. The story of a mouse tells us that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We don't belong here. As God's children, our true home is heaven. Here on earth, we are just pilgrims on our journey back to our heavenly homeland. This is now illustrated in the image of the two disciples 
walking on the road jerusalem has always been traditionally referred to as the image of god's kingdom on the other hand a mouse is the world the disciples leaving jerusalem and going towards the direction of a mouse represents the people who turn away from god in their quest for worldly happiness and comfort there is sadness and gloom in their countenance weariness and fatigue in their feet this is precisely the condition of those who put all their attention and trust in the ephemeral things of the world brothers and sisters but along the road jesus comes and joins the disciples he never leaves them alone in their journey true to his promise that i am with you always until the end of time matthew chapter 28 verse 20 unfortunately the disciples fail to recognize him this is what always happens when people are deeply immersed in their egoistic and worldly ways and ambitions as the lord said for where your treasure is there also will your heart be Matthew chapter 6 verse 21 Even though the two fail to recognize him yet deep inside in their hearts they feel a kind of burning sensation The word of God is already at work in their hearts Indeed the word of God is living and effective sharper than any two edged sword penetrating even between soul and spirit joints and marrow and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart as we read in the letter to the hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 what happens further is more interesting the visitor acts as if to leave them and go further but they urged him to stay back they simply could not resist the power of god's word working inside their very being through prophet isaiah god had spoken these words chapter 55 verses 10 to 11 we read yet just as from earth just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth making it fertile and fruitful giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but shall do what pleases me achieving the end for which i sent it brothers and sisters here is the climax we see the three seated at table for the meal wherein he took bread said the blessing broke it and gave it to them the word eucharist is not used rather the term used in reference to the eucharistic celebration is breaking of bread as found in the acts of the apostles During this celebration of the Eucharistic meal the disciples were able to recognize the Lord the risen Christ The story of Emmaus clearly brings out the liturgy of the Eucharist that we celebrate every day Our celebration of the mass has two parts The first part is the liturgy of the word where God talks to us and our hearts ought to burn with the love and zeal the second part is the liturgy of the eucharist where we come to personally recognize the lord and be intimately united with him in holy communion and this becomes truly meaningful and fruitful when the entire community of believers comes together to celebrate in faith and love brothers and sisters 
On the journey to Emmaus, Jesus listened to their hopes and dreams of a Messiah. They are longing for the redemption of Israel. They are disillusionment over the crucifixion and their confusion over whether the story told by the women at the tomb has merit, whether his entombed and embalmed body had really been spirited away. Jesus continues to journey with his people and listen to their joys and sorrows, pains and happiness. Each of us walks along the road to Emmaus. Along this ro road, God himself walks with us. Whether we are aware of him, whether we are aware of God's presence or not, whether we are believers or unbelievers, whether we are faithful or unfaithful, God is ever present. God is always with us. But the question is, are we with the God? The ever present God, who is made known to us in the breaking of the bread, is also the God who vanishes. This is what we may be experiencing during these days of sickness and death, pain and sorrow. During these days of lockdown, we as believers are called upon to gather together around the table of the Lord in our homes and celebrate the Eucharist by reading the word of God, meditating upon it, and then to receive Jesus through spiritual communion. God is in control of the situation. The event of resurrection is not of darkness and gloom, but of light and bloom. Let our prayer be, stay with us, Lord. Dwell in our hearts and give us peace and joy to bear witness to your love. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, gather together as one family. Let us offer to God our prayers. For He is with us, He is journeying with us, listening to our sorrows and our pains, our cries and our agonies. Let us then place before the Lord all our needs. Let your response be, Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy and the religious, that through the devotional celebration of the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, they may lead the faithful to the risen Lord. We pray, Lord, may, may the Eucharist enlighten us. That the Catholic faithful may read and study the scriptures and encounter Christ in them, for the whole of the scripture leads to Christ and his resurrection. We pray, Lord, Lord may, may the, the Eucharist, Eucharist enlighten, enlighten us. us. For Catholic writers and preachers, that they may expound the knowledge and the wisdom embedded in the scriptures and may faithfully communicate them to the people. We pray, Lord, Lord may, may the Eucharist enlighten, enlighten us. us. For those who are sad or are in grief on account of unexpected turn of events such as death of a dear one, separation from spouse or failure in some undertaking, that their confidence may be re rebuilt as to move forward with confidence. We pray, Lord, Lord may, may the Eucharist Eucharist enlighten us. us. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that we may recognize the presence of Christ in our lives 
and become enthusiastic witnesses of his message and salvation, we pray. Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. Let us pause for a moment and silently place before the Lord all our personal needs. In a special way, let us bring before the Lord the suffering humanity due to this COVID-19. People have lost their hope. People are in agony, in pain and sorrow. Let's pray to the Lord that he may take away this sickness, that he may enlighten our minds, that we may believe in him who is the source of all goodness, who can heal us and give us all that we need. God our Father, listen to the prayers that we have placed before you and in your goodness grant to us all that we need. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given our cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Thank you. 
are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith we proclaim your death o lord and profess your resurrection until you come again therefore As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our pope and Peter Paul Sardana our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed joseph our spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit All glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and upon by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ the kingdom of the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to the apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will will live and reign forever and ever amen
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof, but you share the world and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion my jesus i believe that you are in the blessed sacrament i love you above all things and i long for you in my soul since i cannot now receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come i embrace you and unite myself entirely to you never permit me to be separated from you
let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Benedicat Virgo Maria, Gloria Patre et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, Sicut erat in principio, et lucet sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen.